There's a family of dogs in Huntington Beach, California, known for being unstoppable. They're different breeds, and they come from different troubled pasts. But they've all been given a second lease on life by a woman named Debbie Pearl, who trains dogs for movies. And since 2005, her personal pack has been making the rounds as therapy dogs. The first dog with a disability she adopted was Eddie, Fast Eddie. Eddie was definitely my inspiration for adopting other disabled dogs. He was so full of life, he never let anything slow him down. I mean, he truly was what you would say the word unstoppable encompasses. He just was full of life and he inspired so many people. About once a week, Debbie gathers up the pack and takes them to hospitals, schools, or the Easter Seals, a nonprofit that helps adults with disabilities. And they all have various injuries. They're all survivors of abuse. And for me, that's very important. I, I, I look for dogs that have been through traumatic events, but that have this amazing gift of forgiveness. And that's a powerful thing for a lot of people because they can see the courage, the resilience that these dogs have. And all of mine have been through the worst and they've come out shining. She calls them the unstoppable dogs because they can teach others a lesson in tenacity. So all of these dogs are extremely resilient for sure. But one dog definitely stands out above all the rest. And that dog I think is Elliot. So Elliot is a victim of extreme abuse. He lost all four of his legs at the hands of humans. And he is now got four prosthetic legs. And this is a dog that never walked for a year of his life. And now he's relearning to walk again. And to me, that is just the, the utmost of courage and resilience, this dog. She says all of her dogs are here because they've gotten a second chance at life. And for other survivors of abuse or those with disabilities, that could be a powerful thing to see. Even though they may be in a wheelchair, even though they may be missing a limb, they're making the best of their life, even despite what has happened. So they just go on living and they live their life to the fullest. And I think that says a lot that hopefully others can take from that because it doesn't matter maybe what has happened to you in the past or what you're dealing with at this moment live because you can live a great life and be happy. Happy and unstoppable. In the vineyards of Northern California, winemaker Aaron Robinson is immersed in a career he loves. Really well-drained soils, so the vines really struggle and create incredible, incredible fruit. About 50 miles south. Good morning. In the San Francisco office of CBS News. You're not getting to the money. But, you, don't, but, you don't know. You have, but, she but, has but, to but, know. But, but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, no. Producer Chris Weicker's passion for storytelling is always evident. I think you need you talking to her, and that's the one place where okay, it actually well, we works. So we let's, leave, let's put that back in. All right, we can put it back in. <laughs> and this is Wednesday. An inquisitive little puppy who brought us all together on this beautiful rustic hilltop. Hi, he's my pal. Yes, yes, it's so good to see you again. Well, I guess we do have to do a toast. Yeah. So we're toasting Wednesday for the earbud recovery. Otherwise, I would have had to explain to my son who gave it to me for Christmas. To Wednesday saving Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until you hear how the three of us and our four-legged pal all came to this newfound friendship. So over the summer, Chris lost an earbud, something to which many of us can relate. So she spent the next 10 days looking for it. And then day after day, I kept looking. I figured, okay, I looked under the seat of the car. I figured this thing is gonna show up. She asked the building security guard, Calvin, if anyone had turned it in. Why would you think somebody's gonna turn an earbud into the front desk in San Francisco where things get stolen all the time? No, 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 they would because, I mean, you know, at San Francisco and we, we, we revere tech, right? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, speaking of tech, she used the Find My app on her iPhone. It alerted to a remote location in Napa Valley, more than 40 miles from where she last saw the AirPod. That's when her tenacity kicked in. She headed out alone to track down that earbud. Chris retraced the trip with me. Most people don't drive to the addresses because most people might think it was stolen and most people might think they might get, I don't know, shot. 
I've knocked on a lot of doors in a lot of strange places. Yeah, fair. For more than 40 years, my friend, the fearless award-winning producer, has covered every kind of story. From natural disasters to global conflicts and presidential elections. Wednesday. On the day that earbud disappeared, oh, girl. Aaron Robinson was in the city. He had walked Wednesday before driving back home to wine country. Unbeknownst to him at the time, his little pup picked up the AirPod and dropped it in his car. Fast forward, Robinson is in his field when Wiker drives up to the gate unannounced. She said, do you have my AirPod? <laughs> I was like, your AirPod? Oh yes, yes, I do have your AirPod. <laughs> I do, I do actually have it. I said, do you want to come up? She said, no, I didn't yeah. know who you were. Yeah, she <laughs> was, was like, she's like, I'll wait here. You know what I mean? With that hair, I'll wait here. Um, you probably never thought that somebody would actually show up looking for it. No. You got to have a lot of perseverance to come all the way out here. <laughs> Let me tell you about my dear colleague and friend. This lady is like Wednesday on a bone. <laughs> she ain't letting up, okay? It's what we do for a living. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're given these impossible equations and you can't give up. It sort of bleeds over into your personal life, too. <laughs> this woman has proven to me time and time again that when I thought we ought to just pack it in and go home, just try one more thing. That's amazing. It is a friendship forged in fire and frank conversations. It's over. It's gone on for too long. It looks fantastic. Yes. I'll tell you, her passion and persistence <laughs> has always inspired me. They all cleaned up just fine with a little rubbing alcohol. Do you still use it today? Yes, I have them right here. Early. This is where it all began. And there, there is a little tooth mark we were noticing. <laughs> so we toasted to our newfound friendship and bond over a missing AirPod with a bottle of his Vandela Vineyards. It's really good. And Chris brought treats for Wednesday to reward her for not crunching on that Christmas present. And the takeaway is when you think that you've reached the end of the road, keep going. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. And I learned it from you. Well, here, here. Many, many times over. <laughs> to Chris and David. <laughs> and Wednesday! Yeah, and Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> A Chihuahua mix named Maya got away from Delta Airlines workers at Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, a giant airport. The dog went missing for 22 days, more than three weeks. Now, David first heard about this missing dog from Maya's owner, who reached out to him on social media and also galvanized an army of well-wishers online, including a volunteer who simply would not give up until Maya was rescued. There she is. This was the moment when Maya the Chihuahua Mix was reunited with her family. Still shaking and presumably traumatized, after 22 days on the tarmac at the world's busiest airport in Atlanta, this dog is the ultimate survivor. I was so overjoyed when I got my hands on her. Robin Allgood is the volunteer pet rescuer who brought the three-week saga to an end. The drama began when Maya and Paula Rodriguez left the Dominican Republic headed for San Francisco. During a stop in Atlanta, Rodriguez had to spend the night in a detention center because she didn't have the proper documentation to enter the country. Pets are not allowed in the detention center, so Delta offered to take care of Maya overnight since she had flown as a pet in cabin on Delta to Atlanta. During the transport of Maya, Delta says the dog escaped her plastic zipped carrier and ran onto the active runway with that collar on. Signs are the number one tool in finding a lost dog. Hmm. How did I get Maya, my sign? I am desperate to find my dog. After seeing Rodriguez's plea for help on social media, Robin Allgood reached out to her and then started her own search for Maya. Passed out of hundreds and hundreds of those things. But two weeks into the search, she lost hope. I gave her a 1% chance of still being on that property. Then, three weeks later, you're at home, you get a call at 2.30 in the morning from a FedEx employee who says, I think I saw the dog. Right. That man, Al Lewis, had seen all good signs. She raced to the FedEx facility at Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. So you get to the guard gate, you're like, I'm here to help find a dog, and they're right. kind of looking at you like, okay, lady, it's 3.30 in the morning. Right, that's exactly how they were looking at me. Like, <laughs> really, lady? Y'all, you don't understand. This dog's been missing for three weeks, and nobody has seen this dog. 
the dog is on your property. She says FedEx security told her you need to speak with Delta, so she drove over to the Delta terminal. And he says, we can't give you clearance because we don't have proof that the dog's there. Oh. We need a picture. So what do you do next? I busted into tears. I went back to FedEx and he's like, well, that's not our problem. Delta lost the dog. It's Delta's problem. Now, Delta insists that it search for the dog day and night and check nearby shelters. Meanwhile, it was noon, and Robin Allgood says she was just getting the runaround from everyone. He's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where security is. I go, and I just start walking around. She gives me a number. I kept calling it straight to voicemail. Go back, ask for the manager, and they tell me he's gone. He left. I kept riding by. Allgood says she just circled the FedEx facility for nearly three hours looking for Maya. By this point, it's roughly three in the afternoon. You've been there 12 hours. Right. You come across the FedEx employee. And he's like, OK, when I have time, I'll look. That was FedEx manager Norris Champion. He gathered a group of coworkers and they started to look for Maya on their own. And about an hour later. I get the phone call and he said, hey, I found the dog. Well, he sent me a picture. And as soon as I clicked on that picture, I saw those seashells on the back of her neck. That's her. It was on. I was like, it's her, it's her, it's her. I said. Do not take your eyes off of her. He said, go to the airport and find security. And I'm thinking, oh, no, not again. Here we go again. But actually, that picture changed the game. Officials took Allgood onto the tarmac to get Maya. When you grabbed her, did she flinch? No. That, I, that, that is what shocked me so bad because she was so panicked. She was trembling so bad. And I could literally see her pulse in her neck. Allgood took Maya back to her van. She took this picture, and then she texted it to Paula Rodriguez. I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy that I got her. Hey! The very next day, Delta flew Rodriguez's mother, Lizette, to Atlanta Thank you. Thank you very much. for the reunion. She was still shaking, seven pounds thinner and dehydrated, but Maya was okay, thanks in large part to Robin all good. This is the really angel. And now Maya is back in Paula's arms in the Dominican Republic. Safe, finally, and sound asleep. Ah, don't we love a happy ending? Now listen, as Robin is searching for Maya at the Atlanta airport, her family goes right by her on the family vacation to Hawaii. And she's like, I'm not going. I got to find the dog. She did. And Robin made it to Hawaii and is with her family this morning. PETA is going to split a $5,000 reward, giving it to Robin and the five FedEx workers who helped her to find Maya. Ace. How much do we love Robin Allgood? No doubt. Honestly. Right. Right. I want to think about a job in the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Yeah. No, I love Lady Lee on camera three said, you can't even get people to vote in this country. But when it comes to a dog, <laughs> right. there's something about the love that you know that a, a, that a family has for their dog. Mm -hmm. I don't know how this dog, Maya, survived for 22 days and wasn't hit on the tarmac. Do we have any idea, David, uh, what, what the dog did for food or yes. water? Tony, not much. Hit. I mean, the dog lost seven pounds. There is a river that runs underneath the airport. So yeah. they thought maybe she got some water from there. They think she hunkered down during the day and moved at night. But how she didn't get hit by a plane or a vehicle or something like yes. that for 22 days is remarkable. Yes. Wow. David, we were talking about the edit of that story, the way that we saw Robin tell in great detail all the things that she yeah. went through. Yeah. When they said, go back to airport security, oh, God, not again. <laughs> yeah. no, that's gonna happen. What a great story, David. What a great story, really David. A lot of dogs think they're human, but Dexter takes it to a whole nother level, to the point where I can now safely say, I have seen everything. As we first reported about a year ago, Dexter lives in Uray, Colorado, where this bicolor, bipedal Brittany Spaniel turns heads wherever he goes. Oh, no! oh, my Dexter's owner, Kenty Pasek, says this isn't a trick she taught. It's an adaptation he made after a near-death experience. Hey, come on. When Dexter was a puppy, he escaped his yard, darted into traffic, and got hit by a car. He lost one front leg and the other was badly damaged. So everyone assumed to get around, he would need some kind of adaptive equipment. And he did use a wheelchair for a while, until one day when Kenty set the pooch at the foot of her porch without the wheelchair. 
and I ran in to go get my cup of coffee, came out, and he was right here where he is right now. And I was like, how is this going on? How did you figure it out? I put him back down there, and I grabbed my phone to see what was going on. <laughs> here is the video she recorded. And I was like, oh, we're into something totally different. You never know where life's going to take you. You never know. Since we first told this story, Dexter, who was already a minor celebrity in Ure, has become a major celebrity across the nation, taking to the skies for appearances in TV shows and pet expos. He has pranced in the shadow of New York skyscrapers and Washington's cherry trees. And along the way, this dog has gathered more fans and followers than a lot of our most popular humans. Follow him on Instagram. Oh, good! The whole thing takes absurdity to new heights. But to many, Dexter is no joke. In this pile of mail he receives monthly are hundreds of letters of heartfelt gratitude. I'm recovering from intensive radiation treatments for breast cancer, and you certainly bring joy to my day. Where humans see obstacles. I mean, just... Often dogs beg to differ. Dexter shows us, why aren't you out there doing the things you want to do? Because he has. Off he goes. And in doing so has proven that sometimes getting knocked down is the only way to see how tall you stand. Steve Hartman, On the Road, in Uray, Colorado. Every morning in Alaska, this school bus makes its rounds picking up passengers, but they're not kids going to school. They're dogs going on adventures. Good morning, Amaru. Hi, buddy. The dogs jump into their assigned seats and are attached to leashes instead of seat belts. Load up. The doggy bus is operated by Mo Mountain Mutts, a dog walking business created by Mo Thompson and her husband Lee. I hope everybody enjoyed their trip today and remember, your guide's salary depends greatly upon the quality of their service and the generosity of your gratuity. They load up their bus and take different groups of dogs on off-leash walks multiple times a day. The pups can expect the same treatment as airline passengers. Thank you for riding with my mountain mutts. Would you guys like a complimentary chicken liver with your bus ride? And nobody ever says no to complimentary treats. They're even assigned very important responsibilities. Please stay in your seats till we get to your house. Paws to yourself. Tails out of the aisles. Murray, you're sitting in the emergency exit. Are you willing and capable of offloading the pups in a remote chance of an emergency? Thank you. So in the back of my bus, there's four seats that are all by themselves. So they're literally in their own little section. We call it the licky puppy corner. So dogs that want to like relentlessly lick each other all sit together. And then the mentors and the really calm dogs sit together. Come on, get on the bus. Huh? Who's honking the horn? Bama! The dogs are seated based on their personality, age, and manners. Mina and Murray sit together. They sit behind me because they're very polite riders. They're not noisy. Nobody squeaks in my ear or slaps me in the back of the head with their big paws like these guys definitely would. Hey, you're going to have to get in your seats. While some dogs don't always follow the rules. Excuse me, ma'am, your tail is in the aisle. Ma'am, you're going to have to adjust your butt. Most of them are well behaved. Break! Running around the woods and on the trails can be dangerous. So before adding a new dog to her pack, Mo sets up a meet and greet to test the dog's temperament and make sure it is reliable and trained for recall. Jake Maru! Good dog! Mo and Lee never miss an opportunity to make the doggies feel special. Here we got the birthday boy, his name is Gentleman Jake. Now we're aboard the puppy bus, it's time for puppy cake. It's made just for dogs from Lucy's Bakery. And Jake says thank you for celebrating me. Woo! One thing's for sure. The dogs aren't the only ones having a good time. Oh, you're definitely the frostiest. As Mo and Lee say, they wouldn't trade their job for anything in the world. Animal shelters are used to taking in stray dogs, but this pup named Lilo came to McCammy Animal Center off the street with an added surprise. Uh, we received a call from a Good Samaritan that there was a large dog uh, running around a neighborhood um, and had a leash attached to it. So our animal protection team went out and picked her up as a stray. Um, and when they put her on our truck to bring her back to the center here is when we found the note. 
The note, please love me. My mom can't keep me and is homeless with two kids. She tried her best, but can't get help. I cost too much for her. She really loves me and I'm a great dog. It is one of the saddest things I've ever read. <laughs> the last line is what really hit us all here was please don't abuse me. Um, when you looked at Leela, you could tell right away that she was very well cared for and definitely loved. Um, that was definitely the truth. Unfortunately, many dogs dropped off at shelters don't come with notes. So the staff was glad Lilo came with a clue about her family. A shelter is not the same as a home. So at the end of the day, we'd rather you keep your pet um, and we're able to do whatever we can to make sure that that happens. The shelter staff posted about Lilo on social media, hoping to connect with her owner. Soon, they got a call from someone saying they were Lilo's mom. It was a wonderful reunion. It was very clear when Lilo entered the room that that was definitely her family. <laughs> Everyone was extremely happy. There was not a dry eye in the room. <laughs> um, the kids were also just as um, excited and emotional as everyone else. While centers like McCammy provide shelter for dogs, they also provide resources for families who love their pets but might not be able to keep them due to cost. For this family, we are working with some local agencies in town to help find them pet-friendly shelter. Uh, for other families, we've now established a new fund uh, called the Mac Cares Fund, where we will be able to help families, whether that's paying for a pet deposit at an apartment complex, uh, providing food, resources, anything like that, to just try and keep them together. The goal of animal shelters is to keep dogs like Lilo happy and safe. And sometimes that means going above and beyond to reunite them with the family that loves them. Rick Saulnier of Groveland is still getting to know the newest member of his family, but after only a few weeks, the dog's sweet name suits him. Come on, Lucky. They're still working out their new route and routine, making last week's walk so surprising. Without him, I wouldn't have gone down there. So why we're calling him lucky. Strolling down Rollins Street, a big pile of cash caught Rick's eye. I saw it on the side of the road. I thought it was Monopoly money. The cash is about $8,000 and the checks made it up to twelve. So that's a good amount of money, you know? Rick joked with his wife about taking a trip to Encore, but that's just not the kind of neighbor that he is. He dropped off Buddy and came straight to Groveland police who were delighted by the good deed. It made their day, they said, because a lot of people might not have done that. I don't know. I was, I'm hoping that this shows people that that's what you're supposed to do. Turns out the money had flown off a neighbor's car on their way to the bank. It was returned to that grateful small business owner who later stopped by Rick's house to shake his hand and say a sincere thank you. Well, yeah, I always feel like I have my own integrity, and that's the one thing they can't take away from you. I would hope that somebody would do that for me. <laughs> it's delivery day for Will Gibson and his canine co-pilot. Together, they deliver homemade ice cream and sweet greetings. Who wouldn't want to buy something that tastes amazing and you know that you're supporting someone behind it? The person behind it is a former home theater salesman, now ice cream entrepreneur. A career change forced by a bicycle crash that left Gibson in severe pain and unable to work. Making ice cream at home started as a hobby to keep him busy and evolved into a business. Gorgeous. Now, Gibson churns out 600 pints a week. When you were in the hospital, did you think that there was light at the end of this tunnel? No, no. Ice cream rescued Gibson and his rescue dog has become the name and face of his company, Sweet Pearl. She showed up abandoned on his doorstep while he was recovering. Pearl and I had each other. I'm probably gonna be suffering to some degree for the rest of my life, but all of this is worth it. And the business of second chances extends to Gibson's only employee, Valentin Granado, recently released from a five-year prison sentence for assault. To be given the opportunities that he's given me is, it's life changing for me. A business changing lives one scoop at a time. White chocolate and churro coffee, it is my absolute favorite one. For CBS Saturday Morning, Omar Villafranca, Garland, Texas.
Meet Ripken, the bat dog. I uh, actually sometimes have to apologize to the players because they'll ground out to second and all of a sudden the crowd just goes crazy. Crazy for this six-year-old black lab playing cleanup, collecting the bats for the hometown team. And Ripken's also a good luck charm for Bulls outfielder Miles Masterboni. Do you worry people will say that you're just letting the game go to the dogs? <laughs> no. Not at all, actually. <laughs> Assistant General Manager Chip Allen says the team did have a couple canine concerns. Would the bats come back wet? Would they have teeth marks in it? And I don't know how Ripken does it. No saliva on the bats, no teeth marks. It helps his owner, Michael O'Donnell, is a dog trainer and former college baseball player. We started with just kind of playing fetch with bats in the backyard and having fun. How did you get the dog to ignore all of the balls on the field? Lots of practice. That Letting O'Donnell live out his baseball dreams through his four-legged best friend. Good boy. While hoping the big leagues throw Ripken a bone sometime soon. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Durham. Imagine waking up to an intruder in your bed. That's what happened to Julie and Jimmy Johnson. But the stranger in their bed wasn't a burglar. She was actually pretty cute. I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom and I noticed a dog was in the bed, but our dogs are always in the bed, so I didn't panic about that or think anything about it. I just got back in bed, went to sleep. And um, as the sun was like coming through the curtains, uh, my husband woke up and realized that the dog in between us was not our dog. I roll over and me and my husband lock eyes and sure enough, it is not our dog. Um, it was Nala. And you know, the story just kind of unfolded from there. Julie was at first worried maybe someone else was also in their house, but she soon realized it was just a calm dog who was probably missing from her family. Um, we knew that she was of absolute no harm to us or our dogs and she was just looking for a safe place. So it totally turned like a comical, let's take some photos with Nala, posted on Facebook just to try to find her mom. And um, we've gone to the dogs. Julie's Facebook post about the peculiar guest went viral. And fortunately, the post made its way to Nala's parents. Her family had lost her while on a walk. And she slipped her collar and ran off. So she'd been missing since mid-afternoon on Saturday. And then I guess as she'd made her way about two miles towards our house, and then when the storm rolled in and the thunder started, uh, Nala just came to us uh, at the refuge. The next day, her parents were on their way to pick her up from the impromptu sleepover. They were absolutely not surprised. They were like, she is a bed hog. She snores like an old man. We're sorry, we're on our way to get her. They thought it was hysterical. Once they, they were super thankful that my husband, Jimmy and myself did not get angry with Nala. Nala may have chosen the Johnsons because they have three other dogs and seeking refuge in their home felt safe. Whatever it was, her bold move to get in their bed made her a whole new pack of friends. We invited Nala and her mom's over for ice cream and treats and a puppy play date in our yard. The four of us cannot even believe the attention that this story has gotten and how one dog has brought the four of us together and the eight of us, four dogs and four humans, uh, into, I hope, a friendship.